What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. In this super quick guide, I'll show you the optimized settings for Kingdom Come Deliverance 2. This video is not going to cover Windows optimization at all. Instead, in the description down below, you'll find guides to get the most out of your system. That being said, this game is fabulously optimized out of the box as it's using an older engine, meaning that most PCs should comfortably run this even on the default settings or close to default. Let's get into it. So heading into the actual game itself, you can see things are running really smoothly past the introduction we sat at around 90 FPS here in this traveling section. I'm sitting at around a solid 60 FPS with a 3080 Ti at 2K. But that being said, we can make this a whole lot better. Head into your game's settings anywhere and then into the graphics settings section. First of all, I'd recommend, of course, playing at a supported resolution on your monitor, whether your monitor is 2K, 4K or just 1080p, set this game to match. Then your windowed mode should be full screen for the best input latency and performance, but on Windows 11, at least nowadays, it doesn't make too much of a difference if you play borderless or full screen. Then show FPS is a useful option if you don't have something like the Steam overlay showing you your FPS in the top corner or something external like, for example, River Tuner. If we enable this, you'll see an FPS counter in the top left up here. Then VSync, I definitely recommend turning off on all systems unless you're getting screen tearing. And finally, the frame rate limit doesn't matter too much, but if you're someone who streams or something like that and your other programs are lagging, such as OBS Studio, or you're trying to watch YouTube in the background and that's lagging, you should try capping your FPS to slightly below what you're actually getting in game, just so there's a bit of headroom for programs in the background. If you're only playing the game, leave this frame rate limit as high as you want, or at least matching your monitor. Gamma correction is your preference, doesn't have any effect on FPS, and the field of view, while it technically does affect your performance, it should be set to whatever feels most comfortable for you. Scrolling down resolution scaling, I'd recommend if possible setting this to off or if you'd like to use FSR or DLSS, try pushing it all the way to the left to native AA. This essentially means that it's only doing anti-aliasing, making your game look even better running at native resolution than just off completely. On most systems, at least nowadays, especially at 1080p, you won't need to use any kind of upscaling. This game is just that optimized. Scrolling down even further, motion blur, I definitely recommend it turning off. In my case, things just feel a bit better, but it's your preference. And finally, near depth of field. Again, I'd usually turn this off, though this only really affects the weapon and things that you're holding more than anything else. So it's not too bad. That being said, as you see, I've currently dropped to around 30 FPS, which isn't that good. But here's the kicker. This game is fabulously optimized, especially on the medium preset. Essentially, the low quality setting does give you real good performance and the game runs pretty smooth. You can see I'm running at a solid 55, 57 FPS at 2K with a 3080 Ti. But if I pause this and push that up to medium, you should see practically no change in FPS, but a massive quality improvement pretty much across the board. I've only really dropped about five, six FPS, which isn't too bad. I would think after this cutscene here, things are probably gonna improve, but that's just what I'm getting with a couple of things running in the background. Medium looks really good and the performance is just as good as low, anything above that doesn't gain you anything really in visual clarity and quality, but it does take your FPS down quite a bit. Essentially, moving from ultra down to high, you can expect about a 50% FPS boost, then from high to medium, around 10%, and medium to low, even less than that. So the sweet spot for this game really is the medium option here. As soon as we set this, confirm, and head back to the game, things should be more than playable, especially on most systems. Hardware Unboxed created a fantastic video showcasing a bunch of different GPUs, benchmarking this game with the medium, high, and ultra presets. Essentially, to play this game at the ultra preset, where you expect 60 FPS or above, you'll need at least an RTX 3060, Radeon RX 6800, or an Intel Arc B5. That's just for 1080p. To play at 2K Ultra and get 60 FPS, you'll need at least an NVIDIA RTX 4070 or above, or a Radeon 6900 XT. And to play at 4K Ultra, you'll need at least an RTX 4080 or a 7900 XTX. But this is only speaking about native resolution, as in no DLSS or FSR at all. So if we move from off to DLSS on NVIDIA graphics cards or FSR on everything else and change it away from the native AA option, which is essentially just native with a bit of anti-aliasing so things look even better, I move from 40 FPS 
on medium settings at 2K to quality around 50-ish FPS, balance takes us to around 55, and that's probably as low as I'd recommend going. For the most part, if you keep everything closed in the background of your system and you have a somewhat modern GPU, then this game's gonna run real good out of the box. But let's go ahead and break down some more in-depth settings. For now, I'll crank it all the way down to low, leave it on DLSS balanced, and let's try running through each of the advanced graphics options here. And I'll quickly load back to the very first mission, just so we can get some more stable numbers. So here, practically nothing changes unless I tell it to, and we're sitting at a solid, say, 94 FPS on low with DLSS balanced. If we raise object quality to ultra, we've dropped to around 74 FPS, and ultimately not too much has changed. If we set object quality to medium, we jump all the way back up to around 87 FPS, which is still a drop from the original 9394 on low. So object quality does have a pretty big impact. Particles obviously will be here and there, but if we crank this up and wait for something to happen, such as that, we don't seem to drop any FPS at all. This is likely more a CPU band effect, so leave it all the way up on Ultra, for example. Lighting, from low to high here, I'm still sitting at a solid 92, 93 FPS, so at most we've lost maybe one FPS, which isn't much at all. If we, for example, light this torch just to illuminate the environment, we're still jumping around 95, 96, so nothing really has changed at all with lighting on Ultra. Global illumination, we drop all the way down to 77 FPS, Yes. On medium instead, which is just one step above low, we're sitting at a solid 88 FPS, so we dropped around 10 with this, meaning it's a pretty costly option to change. Bringing it back down to low, we gain a handful of FPS and we're back up to 90, 91. Post-processing shouldn't have much of an impact at all. Pushing it up to ultra, yeah, we're sitting roundabouts at the same place, maybe minus one FPS. Shader quality from low to ultra, we're still setting it around 98, so again, maybe one to two FPS drop here, but for the most part, nothing changed. Shadows should have a bigger impact, and they do have a big impact on how things look in-game. It adds a lot more depth. We did drop all the way down to 70 from low to ultra, but if we set this just to medium, things still look pretty much exactly the same as ultra, except we've gained a handful of FPS. We're back up to 90 FPS, which is huge. This looks infinitely better than low. Then textures should predictably have almost no effect on your system, especially if your graphics card has a ton of VRAM. So from 100 FPS at ultra, cranking it down to low, we're still at around 100, so nothing really has changed here at all, except objects should look quite a bit better. For the most part, you'll be adjusting this textures option based on how much VRAM your graphics card has. If you're sitting with around four gigs of VRAM in your graphics card, set this to low, around six, medium, eight, high, and anything above that ultra is probably good. So saving this, things should look at least a little bit better, close and further away, and we have practically no FPS cost, unless of course you run out of VRAM, pushing this option way too high, but the odds of that are very low. Moving down, volumetric effects should have an effect with smoke, clouds and things like that. And of course, pushing from low to ultra, there's not too much going on. There's a bit of smoke over there. We've dropped maybe one FPS, so not much at all. Oh, there we go. We've dropped to 96, so a couple of FPS lost. Then vegetation detail, this should add a lot of detail to the world. So this is low, 98 FPS, medium, still 98, all the way up to ultra, and we're still sitting at the same place. I don't think there's too much vegetation around us here, but if you were to enter a forest or something like that, you may see a drop in your performance with higher options. Finally, character detail obviously affects how other people look. So let's find someone is standing still. Here we go. This is low and we're setting at a solid 102, three FPS, cranking it to medium, still around the same, not much has changed. All the way up to ultra, it looks just as good as medium and we're getting maybe a little bit less performance. We've dropped maybe one FPS. And so these are my optimized settings. Object quality, low, particles and lighting, ultra, global illumination, low, post-process, ultra, shader quality, ultra, shadows, medium, textures, ultra, depending on your VRAM, volumetric effects, ultra, vegetation details, ultra, character detail, medium. And with these options, we get FPS very similar to low with the quality of medium. So at 2K with a 3080 Ti DLSS balanced, I'm getting a solid 107-ish FPS without optimized settings. If we instead push to 
low, we gain maybe 5 FPS to 113, 114. Medium, we're sitting at 102, 101. High, I drop all the way to 85, 86. And finally, Ultra, around 76 FPS, even with DLSS set to balanced. So again, I'd either recommend Medium, if you don't want to do too much tinkering, or I'd recommend my optimized settings from just a moment ago. And for the most part, that's it. We've run through all of the options here. If you'd like extra performance, just make sure things in the background on your system are closed. And if you'd like, in the description down below, there's a Windows optimization guide, NVIDIA, and the rest, so you can get even more performance out of your system. That has been Kingdom Come Deliverance 2's optimization. Thank you all for watching. Again, if you'd like to see performance on these different graphics presets for a bunch of different GPUs, you'll find a link to the hardware unboxed video down below. It's a fantastic breakdown. Thank you all for watching. Mine's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.